Let's, let's kick off this morning, Mark chapter 12. Anybody bring their Bibles with them today by way of paper or electronic devices? Oh, look at that. I see hands moving and heads spinning. Amen. Mark chapter 12. As you're finding your scriptures, Mark chapter 12, next Sunday we will start Kingdom Kids. Amen. Monica has been working really hard. And there's lots of things that need to be done to make this all work. And then not this week, but the next week, we'll start youth. Amen. 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 So we're looking forward to that as well. Amen. So praise God. Start a new series that we'll use for this month of September called All In. I believe the Holy Spirit speaking to us to go all in. All in. Mark chapter 12, verse 30 to 31. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Who's my neighbor? Everybody. Then I don't need to preach this. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. You shall love your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your might. Psalms 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. And Him my trust, my heart trusts. I am helped and my heart exalts. And with my song, I give thanks to Him. Father, we thank you for your word that's forever settled in heaven. Father, I pray you speak to our hearts today. I pray, Father, you anoint this vessel of clay one more time and you minister as only you can. Heal, save, and set free. Hide us behind Calvary's cross. You would have your way in this house in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. All in. Everybody say all in. Have you ever done something in your journey that just wasn't all in? You just done half the job? I remember one time when I was a young fella, and I got a job up the road piling wood. Now, my father taught me right from the time I could pick up a stick of wood. I was cutting. I was splitting. I was doing whatever we had to do. I think it was 12 to 14 quart of wood a year that we had to put away. So I thought, well, after this many years of being this high, when I got to be 12 or 13, I could take on some jobs up the road somewhere and get paid to do this because at home I got it for free. <laughs> well, board was free and food was free and the power was free. <laughs> I'll go up the road and do this. So anyway, so, of course, about this time, I'm getting in guitar, I'm getting into music, I'm getting into all this cool stuff that to me was cool and fun. But the folks up the road called me and said, Jody, could you come and pile the wood for me? Sure. So they gave me whatever the hourly rate at the time, six or seven bucks an hour it was. But I wanted to go play music. I wasn't interested in making money. I wasn't interested in piling wood. And so I thought, well, if I could get that big pile of wood stacked over there, we'll be just fine. Whoever here has stacked wood? So you know there's a method to the madness. Big side, little side, big side, little side, round stuff. You don't put the round stuff at the ends, right? Well, I didn't care. She all looked good to me, and the ceilings of the basement were 12 feet, and I thought, we're good. So I was just flying. Threw that all in, looked real good. I left, yep, stacked her all, called the boys up, we're good to go, it's music time. Well, anyway, <laughs> y'all know where I'm going with this, don't you? The neighbors called my mom. Yeah, uh-oh, was right. And everything I piled come a-crashing down. Because I didn't do it. With all my heart. It come crashing down. So, of course, as you can imagine, I'm not going to take you back to the age of 12 and 13 of the lesson and the lecture and the licking. <laughs> I believe that the church right now is called to be all in. Amen? Amen. 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 I hear this term in sports, all in. I hear it in business, in business coaching and life coaching. I hear it in community. I hear it in politics. I hear it all over the place. I'm in. I'm all in. I'm fully committed. 
I believe that we, if we're going to advance and see the kingdom of God advanced in this region, we as a body, we as a church family, we must recognize the opportunity for us to be all in. What does all in mean? It means this to you and I, and then I'm going to get into this text that I just read in Mark chapter 12. All in is more than just showing up to church on Sunday morning. Amen? All in means, you know what? If you get a prompting to pick up the phone and reach out to somebody, I can guarantee you that's not the devil prompting you to do that. Amen? I can guarantee you if you're driving by someone's house and the Holy Spirit says pull over and knock on their door or the Holy Spirit says bless them with a blessing that they can't do on their own but show up and help them out, I assure you the Holy Spirit has done that and not your adversary. Amen? Right now, while well, we are doing what we're doing, one of our young people's helping out another church. Ben Densmore is helping another church out because they don't know how to run their soundboard. Let's call all in. Amen? Amen? It goes past these four walls. But while we're doing this, a part of us is at Union Street Baptist helping them out as well. That's called all in. Amen? Amen. Some of you have reached out to folks in the hospital this week. Some of you have reached out to your neighbors this week. Some of you reached out to family members this week. Some of you have helped out benevolently in somehow or another. That is called all in. Somebody, you've skipped a few meals or two this week and you skipped a few things and you prayed and you interceded until you got the answer and the direction and you heard the voice of God. That's called all in. Amen. The Holy Spirit is calling for the church of North America to be all in halfway in is just showing up singing five songs doing a little patty cake and hoping the preacher's not too long but all in is saying you know what God's going to heal God's going to save God's going to deliver and we'll do it as long as we've got to Jesus showed up in Mark chapter 12 and let me tell you something right now he was all in amen he woke up I, I wonder what it was like now let's just put the flesh Jesus on should we we spiritualize Jesus and we should, but he was all flesh and all God at the same time. Amen? Amen? How do you know that the scripture says he was tempted in all things just like you and I were? You mean he faced some of the rackets I faced? He sure did. And he beat them. But I bet you when he was 30 years old, maybe when he was 18, Dougie, I don't know. I bet you when he woke up in the morning, his feet was kicking for hit the floor. <laughs> I don't think it was, man, I need three coffee. Church. Thank God they started at 1030 about time. It's funny how we get to work at 9 o'clock and get there a quarter to 9 and we're all good to go. Think nothing of it, but not church, no. I'm just nagging you. Just, I love you. But I bet you when he woke up in the morning, he was ready to go. There is a leper down yonder I got to go see. There's a tax collector, and I want to get to know him. There's a dude climbing the tree because he's too short, and his name is Zach. And I got to go pay attention to him because we're having tea. It's going to be red rosy tea at 5 o'clock tonight before Live at 5 comes on. We're going to go see him. I believe he was all in right from the get-go. Amen? How do you know that? Even while he was in Mary's womb. Amen? While he was there, and Mary went to go yakking with Elizabeth and told him all about the Holy Ghost even leaped in the womb. He, he was all in before he even was birthed. I'm telling you something, folks. We can be all in. In every way, every shape, and every form. You say, how do I do it? Study Mark chapter 12 for a little bit. It may help us out. So let's, let's talk about it. Mark chapter 12. What's going on in Mark chapter 12? I find it very interesting, Mark chapter 12. I find it very almost, almost like free entertainment, as it were, in Mark chapter 12. Because the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees were always trying to corner Jesus. Did you ever notice that? You, you'll never find a time when the leper, the halt, or the lame ever put Jesus in a corner. You can't find it in there. But the religious people, those folks that never miss Sabbath, never miss going to the synagogue, had the law studied inside and out. Historians tell us, scholars tell us, that approximately these folks, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the Jews of the day had approximately 613 laws they had to follow. I do well by speed limit. <laughs> Faster pastor. <laughs> I know, she's a racket. 
And so they put, <laughs> they put Jesus in this corner. Well, you don't put the Son of the living God who wrote this stuff in the corner. But they had not yet had a revelation that the guy they're looking to authored this stuff. Amen? They had no understanding of revelation or understanding or illumination that the guy that showed up was going to fulfill this stuff. But what was it that was getting them? Well, you got to understand, I know I refer a lot to our trip that we took in Israel, but one thing that really it, it sort of just made a magnet in my mind was how small Israel really is. You could go from here to here in a very, very short period of time. And word travels fast. Amen? It, it travels fast in Charlotte County. Amen? So, um, something could happen in St. Stephen, and by 2 o'clock that afternoon in St. George, did you hear? What was it about these folks that agitated them? What was it they wanted to corner Christ? What was it they wanted to get to this Mark 12 moment? Let's do a little backdrop history lesson to get into it. You see, these guys, these Sadducees, these religious people, in chapter 10 of the book of Mark, witnessed a blind Bartimaeus getting healed. They saw that with their own eyes and heard Bartimaeus declare, I am healed, I can see. They heard in this very same chapter an amazing teaching on the power of forgiving and a forgiving heart. In Mark chapter 9, we find where he heals a young lad and brings him into recovery. We find in chapter 8, they witness Jesus feeding 4,000 people. We find in chapter 7 that he finds a deaf guy and he heals him and now he can hear. This stuff was really bothering me because every time Christ made a move, it gave him an influence that nobody else had in the region. We find in chapter 6, really cool stuff. Mark chapter 6, they witness the story of Jesus walking on the water. We find in chapter 5, a resurrection and a deliverance. Go home and read this stuff. It's pretty neat stuff. Mark chapter 4, he, they find out that the winds and the sea obey him. We find in chapter 3 that they get a massive following. He's all in. You get what I'm saying? Everything that he shows up, every time he comes face to face with an obstacle, he turned it into an opportunity and he's all in. My question before I move on this morning, when you face an obstacle, what do you do with it? What do you do with that obstacle? You speak to the mountain. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm okay. I'm abundant. I'm favored. I'm anointed. Amen? You are. You're sealed. You're blessed. You're protected. We walk in a realm here on this earth that nobody else walks in. It's true. The enemy would not want you to believe that or know that or think about that, but we walk in a realm that's completely different. And the stuff that Jesus is doing right here, whether it's walking in water, common seas, healing the blind guy, taking deaf ears, opening them up, doesn't matter what it is, setting people free, he's in and so can we. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'm talking to people right here in this room. You've been healed. Your backs have been healed. Your bowels have been healed. Your legs have been healed. You have recovered. I'm talking to people that you fought for forgiveness and anxiety and worries. And you've overcome that mental disorder in Jesus' name and brought out of that. Amen. Because we're all in. And then we find in Mark chapter 2, he makes buddies with the tax collector and brings them on by the name of Matthew. We find all these different things. And even in chapter 1, he heals on the Sabbath. What a bad thing to do. So this is festering. This is really just festering. Just They're getting together at the coffee shop, and they're talking about the, he healed, he healed, he did this, he did that. And they're gathering steam, and their engine is about ready to blow. And finally they corner him and say, you know what? Because you see, understand this, if you're taking notes and you're a studier, here's how they believe the scribes and the Pharisees, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the Herodians, all believe one thing, that all 613 laws were equal. They didn't believe that one had more hierarchy than the other. If you broke one, you might as well break them all. Remember what I said a few weeks ago? For 50 years, it's been preached in Charlotte County about the God of the don'ts. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do something else. And if you, don't, if you do one of the don'ts, you're in double trouble. And there's all kinds of minions and ambassadors keeping an eye on you. Make sure you do one of the, don't do one of the do's. You're just looking at me. 
And he's like, you know what? Nothing's going to stop me. Nothing's going to hold me back. Nothing's going to take my train off the track. And he knew. You think he didn't know? He knows the very thought and intent of the heart. He knew healing. He could have waited until Sunday. He didn't have to do it on Saturday, the Sabbath. He could have healed any day of the week, but he knew this would get under their skin. And he didn't really care. Because he realized, he said this. Remember what he said? He said, because they're challenging him. Remember with the law, read your text. They were challenging him with the law. And he said, you know, I'm going to tell you something right now. I didn't come for those that are healthy. You think you've got it all together? You think you've got all the answers? You think you're cool? You think you're better than everybody else and almost as good as God? I can't even help you out. He cut to the chase, didn't he? But those lepers, those deaf people, the tax collectors, all those other people, you know what? I'm going to be buddies with them. I'm all in. And it drove them crazy. So, the, you know, we'll put him in a corner and we'll test him. Because if he answers wrong with this, everything you've done from Matthew chapter 1 to Matthew chapter 11 is nullified. Because, you know what? If he steps out of these bounds right here, it nullifies everything else he did. So we're going to corner him. Jesus! Yep. And he was ready for it. What's the most important law? Out of all the laws, what's the best one? What's the most important one? He says, guys, let me tell you what the best one is. I'm going to tell you. You. Look straight at them. You shall love the Lord. Capital L. -L there is Jehovah. So they knew full well what he's talking about. Your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And they're like, huh? I thought it was that one about stone throwing. I thought it was that one about not hitting on Sabbath. Cornered him. You see, Jesus was all in. And he knew that response. Hints on everything about the heart of the Father. If we want to see success in St. Croix, if we want to see a manifest powerful move of the Holy Spirit across this region, if we just employ that every day that you and I operate, every day that we live, and say, so, you know what? I will love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and all my strength, that I'm going to be okay, and I'm going to love my neighbor the same. And if we all did that 24-7, and I know that's not always easy. I know that's a struggle sometimes. Times, but I assure you, an all-in attitude is an attitude that says, you know what? I'm going to love him come what may. You see, we're not going to argue our way into conversions. One thing I find interesting about the love of Christ is this. You know what he just did? He just did it. He just did it. He didn't consult. Well, boys, what do you think? Should I walk on water or shouldn't I? Should I make buddies with Matthew or shouldn't I? What about this Bartimaeus fella? Oh, my goodness, if I do that, my, my, the tax collector, if I do that, that's surely going to ruin my reputation then because Matthew is not a very well-liked guy in town. And I, I, don't, I think we better just leave that guy alone. Just leave him over there somewhere. There's lots of other people to touch and minister to. If we become buddies with him, it would, our influence is gone. You need help? He's in. I've learned this. I don't care who I hang out with. I don't care who has a need. I'm going to stop and talk. I'm going to stop and visit. I'm going to stop and help. I'm going to stop and encourage. I'm going to stop and bless. I'm going to do whatever we can. Why? Because they deserve a chance just like you and me. Amen. A church that is all in is all in prayer and all in worship. Just like what you guys did this morning. Right from the get-go, there was worship. There was worship. There was manifest praise in the house of God. And guess what happens? He inhabits that praise. That means all of God shows up. Not a little bit, not a tiny bit, not a little fraction, but all of God. The whole purpose of Him showing up, putting the universe together, bringing us into the realms of salvation, shows up in this house today and says, you know what? All of me is all here, so let's just go all in. Amen? Amen. 
I assure you when that stuff happens, I assure you that the religious spirits of the day will get angry and frustrated because religion lacks control. And they were losing it. And I've learned this. I don't want control. I want Christ. Amen. 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 I don't want to control the media. I don't want to control the government. I don't want to control anybody else. But here's what I do know. We can have influence. Huh? Influence. I'll give you a little tidbit of influence. Remember I referred to Daniel, I think it's chapter 6, verse 3, when Daniel had influence with all the local leaders and the high up yuppos. Here it goes. I've had it in my heart now for a while that we're going to do uh, an event, a community sing-song event, right here down by the Pizza Delight, okay? I reached out to the town. It was a little while. There's a lot of red tape to go through and all that stuff. And we've been working through all the red tape and writing plans and doing all the stuff you've got to do. But you know what? Here's what one of the town managers said to me. We need a night of hope. I wasn't fighting with them. I wasn't calling them down. I wasn't saying your rules are dumb and stupid and we're not doing this and we're not doing that. We said, you know what? We're going in and we're going to lift up Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Is it all through yet? No, it's not. It's got to go through one more committee. But you know what? I don't care. We're going to get done. Amen? Amen. Amen. What I'm saying is this. We can have influence. I want influence more than I want control because control people will walk away from, but influence people want it. Amen? Jesus had influence over the people that were hurt, halt, and lame. Luke chapter 24, verse 32. Another time where it was with all of their hearts, they, the disciples, said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened up the scriptures? I tell you what I want. When I'm up here preaching and teaching about what Jesus has done and what he's doing right now, I pray that every heart, whether it's right here in body or there online, our hearts are burning. It's not a lecture. It's not a talk. It's not a pet rally. It's the living word of God that will cut. It will reach. It will help. It will heal. He will send his word and heal them. My God will send his word and burn in their hearts. That, my friend, is influence. That is loving your neighbor as yourself. That is the love of God pure and poured on their hearts and spirits. Matthew 28, 7. The Lord, it was said, the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts. And I am helped. My heart exalts. And with my song I give thanks to him. Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So have you ever heard this t- statement, I didn't mean to say that? What you're really saying is, I regretted to say that. It was in my heart, but it leaked out. Yeah. <laughs> we're not perfect. We're just perfect in Him, but we're not perfect as people. We will make mistakes. Right. Sometimes that'll happen. But friends, got to tell you something. The Holy Spirit calls us to be all in. If you're trying to find out or figure out where's your place and where's your position in this whole deal, let me help you by saying this. Our hearts are not just feelings. The heart of the matter is not just how you feel that day. I'll be very honest with you. I woke up this morning. The sun's a shining. It's beautiful out. It's the long weekend. Got a funeral this afternoon. Got a kid to move to university tomorrow. Would have been a nice day to head to the lake and jump in a kayak and go floating around. I know. I know. Confession is good for his soul. But I know the right thing to do is to come and share the word. So my motivation is what I'm pointing out this morning. is not how I feel. Amen. It's not my feelings. It's my faith. Amen. My faith. And when I faith it. I will faith it until I make it. Amen. Amen. Your heart is not how you feel. When he says, love the Lord with all of your heart, it means your entire being. Everything about you. I don't want to give. Doesn't matter. I don't want to tithe. It doesn't matter. I don't want to pray. Doesn't matter. I don't want to love that person. They really offend me and they really get under my skin. It really doesn't matter.
<laughs> it irritated these Pharisees and Sadducees to no end. It really did. But as I close, one thing I want to make very clear and very sure of is this. He says this, beware of the scribes who desire to go around in long robes, love greetings in the marketplace, the best seats in the synagogues, and the best places at feast, who devour widows and widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. These will receive greater condemnation. He really didn't like it a whole lot, the hear me and see me attitude. But give me a tax collector any day. Give me a blind guy. Give me a storm. Give me a poor person. Give me a young person. Give me an opportunity to minister the word of faith. And God's spirit will be made manifest. This season, as we go into the fall season, I ask one question to everybody here. What does it mean for you when we say all in? You have to check your own spirit, your own ministry. I can't do that for you. Where are you? Do you get caught up and tripped up on the things that are going on in this earth? Allow yourself not to. Does it get a little frustrated sometimes? It sure does, but this too shall pass. But God has work to do in this region. God has a powerful work to do in this region. And we will see the works of the kingdom manifest in this place. I want us to stand this morning. And I want us to lift up our voices this morning. And I want us to declare the works of God and say, Father, you know what? With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my might, with all my strength, I want to love you. I want to love my neighbor. Even when we have differences of opinions, yep. Even when I don't like the politics, yep. When I don't like the finance mindset, yep. When I don't like the church they go to, yep. When they done hurt me, yep. I'm going to love them anyway. I'm going to bless them anyway. When I don't feel like praying and fasting, yep. He was so clear when he called people out. Called his 12 disciples out. Even in John chapter 6, verse 66. He said, if you're going to follow me, it goes beyond seeing the cool stuff. It goes down to the blood and the sweat and the tears. John chapter 6, verse 65. He says, you know what? If you're going to follow me and keep on trekking with me and be under my influence, you got to drink of my blood and you got to eat of my flesh. John chapter 6, verse 66. I believe it says many of him, many of them walked away and followed him no more. Historians say around 70,000 walked away and said, all right, we're done. I'm going to be one of the ones that says, you know what? I'm in. I'm covered under the blood. I'm sealed by the seal of promise, and we're going to be okay. All in. Father, right now in Jesus' name, there's a hungry people here. There's a hungry people here looking for more. Desire for more of you. Not more of religion, not more rules and regulations, but more of you. More of your anointing, more of your power, more of your grace, more of your direction. Just more of you. Have your way, Father. Speak to us, Father, that we would be found guilty of being all in. 100% full tilt. Every bit of us. Let's go ahead and worship, and then we're going to pray. We're going to pray that we will be all in in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and worship in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen.